Hello and welcome, this video is about the R squared. Before we are starting, let's do a quick recap of what we did until now. We have implemented a simple linear regression of the form y, which is the dependent variable, equals to m, the slope, times x, the independent variable, plus b, the y-intercept. We were working with the weight and height data set, which can be found on Kaggle, and I will link that in the video description. We have filtered that data so that we end up having only females here and we have defined the independent variable x as the weight of those persons and the dependent variable y as the height of those persons. So in simple words we want to predict the height of a certain female based on her weight. Therefore, we have done some stuff like getting the slope of the regression line. This is not important for this tutorial. You can click the previous video for that. And we also determined the intercept. And most importantly, we visualized that and ended up with this plot. And this is just containing the true y values, so the true height values here, as the blue dots based on the weights of the certain person. And the red line here is our regression line, which we have defined as m times x plus b. Now, we also um, created a predicted y function, which is taking a certain value as an input, and that is, of course, a weight value, and provides us a predicted height value for this given weight value. Okay, now let's take a look at the R squared. The R squared is telling us how much variation of the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. One possible way to calculate the R squared is this formula, 1 minus SSE divided by SST. So let's take a look at the components of this calculation. We have SST as the total sum of squares, and that is just the difference between the observed y values and the y mean. The difference is squared and then all of those are summed up. Let's take a look at a visual explanation of the total sum of squares. And this chart is from Wikipedia, a pretty nice chart. So we are just considering the left hand side here and that is SST, so the total sum of squares. And what we are seeing here is the y mean as this line here and the actual y values, which are the black dots here. And as you see, we are taking the distance between those points and the line and just squaring the distance. That is why we have those squares here. So a pretty nice visual explanation of the total sum of squares. So just the distance between the actual y values and the y mean values. This is also the total variation of the dependent variable. Now, Let's get to the next one, which is the residual sum of squares. And that is the difference between the observed y values and the predicted y values. This is also called the error term, which is sometimes written down as E or epsilon. So this is very important for the future. This is the error term. This is also squared and then summed up afterwards. So let's take a look at the right hand side of this chart. So this is SSE. So we got um, the regression line here. So the f is just indicating a function, which is just our m times x plus b function. And what we are getting here is this regression line. And those squares here are just the differences between the true y values and the regression line, as you see here. Now, once we got that, we can calculate the R squared. So SSE divided by SST and then 1 minus. Why 1 minus? Well, we are interested in the difference between those variations. And that would be like, let's just write that down, SST minus SSE. And then we would divide that by SST to get the proportional amount and this is the same as writing 1 minus SSE divided by SST. So that is just the same, but um, you could write that in this way if it helps you understand the calculation better. Now, let's do that together. Let's start with um, calculating the total sum of squares. So we need our y values. So we are starting with y minus 
And then we need the y mean value, which we defined above. I think it's y mean. Yes, it's y mean. So we are just subtracting that. So we are taking y mean here. And afterwards, we are squaring that difference as it is down here. And after that, we are taking the sum out of that. And we have defined SST. So therefore, I get something. No. So we have defined SST. Done. Now we need to define SSE. And SSE is y minus the predicted y's. So first we need to get those predicted y's, right? To get those, we are using our predicted y function and just provide every x value. So we are just providing x as an argument for this function. So let's just call it y hat here. And we're just using predicted y and then provide x as the argument. So let's actually print that out. So what we are getting is this data frame now containing the predicted values. This is somehow misleading as this is described as weight, which is just the column name of the x variable. But actually this is the predicted height. So we have to amend that. Let's just do that. Let's just rename this columns um, let's just use weight, this should be height, right? So we are doing that and we have amended that to height because this is the predicted height. So we are just reassigning that newly so that we got the right y hat here, the rightly described y hat. And now we are just subtracting the y hat, but we have to access this uh, column here. So we need to write down height and we are just squaring that difference. So this is just because we are subtracting a data frame from a series. So this is just a technical thing. We have to access this column here or transform the y to a data frame. So I'm just subtracting, as said, the y hats from the y's here. So if we are squaring that and then take the sum out of that, we have to find our SSE. Okay, now let's get the R squared. So we are taking the difference as said from SSE, sorry, SST minus SSE, and then we are dividing that by SST, and we are getting 0 0.72 something. And this is, as said before, this is the exact same thing as if I'm doing 1 minus SSE divided by SST. That's the exact same thing. So as you see, we're getting the, the same result here. So again, this is our R squared. Summarizing, the better your model fits the data, so the lower the distance between true and predicted values, the smaller SSE will be. And if SSE is small, R squared will be pretty high. So you can have the situation that SSE is larger than SST. In this case, the R squared could even be negative. Now, let us take a look if we did the right calculations. So let's use Escalon to get the R squared in the final step here. So let's import from sklearn import linear model then we are using the model we are just using the linear regression here then we are fitting the model to x and y and in the last step we are using the score function which is just the r squared in sklearn. So we are just using x and y as the arguments and we are getting 0 0.7 something and that is exactly the same value as we calculated. So everything went better than expected. I hope you liked this video. I hope you got the concept of um, R squared. In case you did, I'm happy if you subscribe to the channel and like this video. Um, if anything is unclear, please drop me a comment. Um, those concepts are taking some time, so uh, please be a bit patient. 
um, go through those calculations uh, again. It really helps to understand the concept behind that. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. See you next time. Bye-bye.